Hi there, welcome and today we'll be looking at the letter of Jude, the half-brother of Jesus. It's a letter that I read several times in the last few days and God spoke to me in many ways through it. So I thought I might share it and let's see what God will speak to you through this time. So the letter was written around 65 AD, which is over 30 years after Jesus um, died and then was raised from the dead. And in this letter, you know, Jude challenged his readers to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ and to help others who are wavering in their faith, as well as many other thoughts he shared. So let's read first part of the letter, um, which is Greetings and the Danger of False Teachers. That's the title in my Bible. And let's see what we can take out of this passage. So Jude 1 verse 1. This letter is from Jude a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. I'm writing to all who have been called by God the Father, who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Christ Jesus. May God give you more and more mercy, peace and love. So that's the greetings of Jude. What is interesting to me in this part, and we might comment as we go, is that he addresses the letter well, he says this letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ. It's interesting. I, I then looked through all the other letters, like the letters of Paul. And Paul was writing in a similar way. He would write Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ or a slave of Jesus Christ or Peter, a servant of Jesus Christ. So I see that either he was in close relationship to them or he read their, their letters or it was just a common thing how people of the first century, Christians of the first century would address their letters and how they would see themselves themselves as slaves of Jesus Christ, as servants of Jesus Christ. And interesting when he says, I'm writing to you who have been called by God the Father. And I was saying, God, thank you that you called me. Father, thank you that you called me. And then he says, who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. And I was saying, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for keeping me safe in the care of Jesus Christ. And I wonder if that's something for you as well. To read the scripture and in a way, just verse by verse, as you see it, just say it to God as they were your own words. Thank him for calling you, for loving you, for caring for you. And then verse 2, may God give you more and more mercy, peace and love. And Lord, I thank you for the person listening to my voice now and watching, Father. I thank you that you also call them, Father. I thank you that you love them in Christ Jesus. And I ask, Father, keep them safe and protect them by the power of your name and give them more and more mercy, peace and love. And now is the passage that is titled in my Bible, The Danger of False Teachers. Verse 3. Dear friends, I have been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write to you about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. I say this because some ungodly people have warmed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. So that's verses 3 and 4. And what I like here is this, you know, highlight and focus on churches, local church. I mentioned that a few weeks ago when I got an opportunity to preach at our church, that local church is God's plan A. God doesn't have a plan B. For some reason, God decided that through a local church, or through a church of which Christ is the head, God will bring about his kingdom. God will bring his kingdom through the church. And here Jude is protecting the church. He's seeing some people that made their way into churches and they were deceiving people, saying that God's marvelous grace allow us, allows us to live immoral lives. And such condemnation or condemnation of such people was recorded long ago for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. And that's what I found 
working with other churches and other Christians that if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Master, you can really work on so many of the other areas and, and do some work together for such a time as this. But if there is no agreement that Jesus is the Lord and Master and that He is the one who we are following and taking as an example, then it's really hard to get things done. So, that's interesting. Okay, let's pick it up on verse 5. So, I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt, but later he destroyed those who did not, did not remain faithful. And on the word Jesus, I have a little note there which says, verse 5, other manuscripts read the Lord or God or God Christ. So in my translation in NLT, it says that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel, but it could be translated as Lord, God or Christ, as it's said in other manuscripts. But later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. And don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as a warning of eternal fire of God's judgment. And there is a few more stories that Jude will mention, but I will pause here. We are on verse 7. And it's interesting that there are stories in the Bible like of Sodom and Gomorrah and other stories like rescuing Israel out of Egypt that are there in the Bible and they speak to us of God's character or God's judgment on like certain behaviors and stuff like that. And it's super helpful to know that in the Bible there, there are stories like that and not everyone, you know, was judged by God in this time, in this life, for like some sexual choices or financial decisions or so on. Some, some people, you know, don't have or don't see this immediate consequence of their action. But through the stories of people who have experienced them, we know God's character. We, we can see what he thinks and feels about certain ways of living. Maybe that's a better way of putting God. God reveals to us what he thinks and feels about certain ways of living and doing life, interacting with other people. So stories in the Bible are important and helpful. And he continues in the same way. These people who claim authority from their dreams live immoral lives, defy authority and scoff at supernatural beings. But even Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. I love this part that he said, the Lord rebuke you. You know, sometimes we make judgment and, and we feel like we are Christ and we identify with Christianity so much and God's judgment that, that we speak of those things like they are our own. But what we are defending and what we are proclaiming is the gospel about Jesus Christ, his words, what he has done. The Lord rebuke you and the Lord bring salvation to you. Let's read one more verse. This took place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. Verse 10, but these people scoff at things they do not understand. Like unthinking animals, they do whatever their instincts tell them. And so they bring about their own destruction. We will pick it up next week in our another episode, but it's interesting that someone said, it's not that when we break God's law, then God punishes us. When we break God's law and his commandments, you know, the very act itself breaks us and is a consequence in itself. Thank you for being with me and we'll see you next time on Jude part two.